Greetings, this is Carol Clemens from Life Enrichment Ministries. I'm using a new gadget tonight to hold my phone, so I hope it's not shaking around. And uh, what I want to bring to you, at first you can learn more about me if you go to my website, which is carolclemens.org, C-A-R-O-L-C-L-E-M-A-N-S. And I am a Bible teacher, a certified pastoral counselor, and I love the Word of God. I provide counseling nationwide by phone and by Skype. My heartbeat is to help hurting people grow in God spiritually, emotionally, and relationally. And what I felt today is I have worked with people I counsel Monday through Thursdays from 2 p.m. to 10 p.m. Central Standard Time. And what I felt like I wanted to share today was a passage of scripture that deeply touches my heart and that I share when I am counseling. And I'll explain why it is so important as I go through it. And it's in, I'm going to be using the New Living Translation. I hope that doesn't offend anyone, but it's just a little plainer English and helping us to understand what God expects from us. So Ephesians 5 and 1 Imitate God, therefore, in everything that you do, because you are his dear, dear children. Live a life filled with love, following the example of Christ, because he loved us and offered himself as a sacrifice for us, a pleasing aroma to God. So I'm going to stop there on that first verse. And what I want to share is this scripture tells us, to imitate God in all that we do. There's something about my teaching and counseling, teaching the Word of God for 50 years and counseling for 25 years. The six years I taught at Christian Life College in Stockton, California, I was told, and I used to get teased, but then it was serious, that if you're around Sister Clemens, she's going, and I'm fine with Carol Clemens, she's going to be talking about being Holy Ghost controlled. That is exactly, if everyone was Holy Ghost controlled and they didn't hurt other people, then I would not be counseling as much. But what I'm going to bring back on how I apply the Word of God. You know, um, counseling can look, be looked on with a lot of questions and doubts and what does this woman do? Well, I'm going to tell you my therapy, even though I've had college education, is the Word of God. And there's a statement called cognitive behavioral therapy. Cognitive is how we think. Behavior is my actions. And my therapy in counseling for the last 25 years has been the word of God. And the first verse tells us, imitate God, Ephesians 5.1. In everything that we do because you are, we are his dear children. So how we treat other people, how we react to situations, how we discipline our children, how we deal with conflicts with our husband or wife. Are we imitating God in everything that we do? And another large amount of my counseling is on sexual sins, including addiction to pornography. Now listen to this. Verse 3 of Ephesians 5 let there be no sexual immorality or impurity or greed among you. Such as such sins have no place, no place among God's people. These should not even be mentioned. Obscene stories, foolish talk, and coarse jokes. These are not for you. Instead, let there be a thankfulness to God you can be sure that no immoral, impure, or greedy person will inherit the kingdom of Christ and of God. For a greedy person is an idolater, worshiping the things of this world. Don't be fooled by those who try to excuse these sins, for the anger of God will fall on who, all who disobey him. So he's asking us, to imitate him in all that we do. And then he tells us through his word that if we get involved in these sins, then we are going to be under the anger of God. And we don't want to do that. So you can be sure again, I'm going to read it again, that no immoral, impure, or greedy person will inherit the, the kingdom of Christ for a greedy person is an idolater worshiping the things of the world. 
Don't be fooled by those who try to excuse them, for the anger of God will fall on all who disobey him. Don't participate in the things that these people do. For once you were full of darkness, that's before we, we were all sinners, fallen short of the glory of God. So we were full of darkness, but now we have come to salvation. But now you have light from the Lord, so live as people of the light. For this light within you produces only what is good and right and true. Carefully determine what pleases the Lord. Take no part in worthless deeds of evil and darkness. Except, ex, instead, excuse me, instead expose them. It is shameful to even talk about the things that ungodly people do in secret. But their evil intentions will be exposed when the light shines on them, for the light makes everything visible. And I'm just going to stop there. I could go through the rest of that chapter in Ephesians because the last part of it is all about marriage. And I've written a book. I don't have a copy here right by my chair where I do my counseling from. But I've written a book called God's Design for Marriage and the Secrets to Love, Joy, and Peace in a Marriage. And the, this beginning verse says, imitate God in all that we do. In all, that means everything. My challenge to all of us, how do we treat our husband? How do we treat our wife? How do we treat our children? Do our children and grandchildren see the face of God? Do they see the love of God shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost? Are they seeing it real time? You know, recently I put a spotlight out in the front of my house. I'm on Facebook to the glory of God, and uh, the pictures are on Carol Theobald Clemens' page. But I, along with those that spotlight, it makes the house look elegant at night, and also lights deter intruders. And I was thinking the light even shines up over top of the roof, and we have some tall trees in this backyard, and it even reflects on there. Wherever the light goes, it dispels darkness. You know, that's what our life is supposed to be. Our life is supposed to be dispelling darkness around us wherever we go. That's just supposed to be part of our life. And I don't care if you're a newborn Christian or if you have had the Holy Ghost 62 years like I have. We're supposed to allow God from the very beginning to be Holy Ghost controlled. That's how I speak, that's how I talk, that's how I treat other people. And one thing I say all the time, how we treat others is how we are treating God. I want to say it again and I want to take a moment here. How we treat others and how how we treat others is how we are treating God. And that needs to be something that we look at in all situations of life. When I'm driving the car, do I drive it with anger? When something happens that upsets me, the anger is not the sin. It's how I, I act out. Do I wait and process every thought, feeling, and action through God? Because again, this is the way we humans function. We get a thought, it creates a feeling, and then we act out. Our challenge to us individually, and a challenge in my teaching, anybody that hears me teach, Anybody that uh, reads my articles on carolclemens.org, C-A-R-O-L-C-L-E-M-A-N-S, are going to be reading about the challenge, does your life reflect the glory of God? Are you taking your thoughts and your feelings to God first? When anger comes, are you just blurting out and hurting the people around you? Or are you focusing on God and saying, God, I'm really angry right now. I'm going to be honest with you, Lord. I'm angry right now, and I need help. Would you please help me? This is what we need to do. We need to let God be in the center of our lives, which is true worship. The worship that is called worship at church, anyone can come in and sing and shout and do a little dance. But God looks on the heart. We look on the outward appearance, and we tend, and we shouldn't do it, we tend to judge people by what they do while they're in church. But the true worship, the, the heart that God looks at is what are we doing when we're outside of the four walls of church? Are, can people see that there's a difference about you? And I'm not talking about the hairdo. I'm talking about holiness of the heart. When the heart is holy, your attitude's going to be 
Christ-like. You're going to be fulfilling Ephesians 5 and 1. Imitate God in everything, in all that you do. So that's my challenge for tonight. From Life Enrichment Ministries, go to my website. I provide counseling nationwide by phone and by Skype. And it's in confidentiality. And I do that with prayers beginning and ending uh, the full hour of counseling. You can read all about it if you go to that, my website, carolclemens.org. Read the About Ministry page. You're going to read about my life, my ministry, my education. I love God and God is coming soon. And the challenge I'm giving to everybody, is your heart right with God? Are you just going to church and acting Christian or are you Christ-like? That makes all the difference in the world. So if you want more of this encouragement teaching, go to my Life Enrichment Ministries page on Facebook and go to the video section and there's several videos there and and last month I checked it and there's been over 28,000 views of those videos and many people will send me thank you for teaching the word this is our the word of God is the answer to not committing sin it's a lamp to my feet a light to my path and the psalmist David said of old thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee we all usually eat two to three times a day. My challenge to everybody, are you eating the word of God? Are you talking to God? Do you have an intimate, close relationship with God that you pass everything you're doing? God, are you pleased with this? And let that be coming from your heart on an instant moment. As the prayer is said in Psalms 139, and if you... If you um, hassle with low self-worth. Go to Psalms 139 and read the word of God. And it said, God was there when you were being formed in your mother's womb. And he planned every, he knew, he planned every uh, part of your body, but he knew everything that was ever going to happen to you, good and evil. And he has made a way for salvation and for healing through his word. So check out the articles on carolclemens.org, on Life Enrichment Ministry page. I post there on about eight different sites out to the possible membership of over 100,000 people. The, the Lord has the answers for our hurt and our pain. He not only has the answers for salvation, and if you haven't had salvation, you need to go to Acts, the second chapter. Read the whole book of Acts, and you will find out that we all need to repent of our sins, be baptized in that wonderful name of the Lord Jesus Christ, and allow God to give you the gift of the Holy Ghost, which is spirit in you. In him we live and we move and we have our being. So I pray God blesses you and I'm just going to stir up. I want to stir up the gift that lies within all of us because it's our own words and our own actions that we're going to give an accountability to God for. So may you be encouraged in him and prayerfully I'm going to say this on my Life Enrichment Ministry page and I'll be reposting it on others that God has the answers for our hurting. God has the answers for our marriages. And all of it has to do with, will we totally surrender our hearts unto the Lord? Is thy heart right with God? A wonderful old song. So let's make up our minds. I will study the word and I will learn how to be an imitator of the Lord Jesus Christ. By the way, my phone number is 636 Four four eight zero one two one. All of this information and what I my ministry is nationwide, and I can come into churches and teach. I can teach for seminars. I could teach your church through Skype if you want some teaching for leadership. I've been involved in ministry and leadership my whole life, and I love to share the truths of God's word. So check out my website. Check out my Life Enrichment Ministry page. I'm even on YouTube, Carol Clemens YouTube. So God be with you. May you have a blessed day. Jesus is coming soon. Are you ready? That is the question. May God bless you.